Welcome back to Calvary Connection as we gather together uh, during this season of Lent discussing these wonderful texts that we have. Yep. Uh, today, as we gather together, we are looking at a story from the book of Acts, chapter 16, talking about someone named Lydia. Uh, Vicar Jamie, do you want to read us the text? Absolutely. This comes from Acts 16, verses 11 through 15 says, From Troas we put out to sea and sailed straight for Samothrace. And the next day we went to Neapolis. From there we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony, and the leading city of the district of Macedonia. And we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath we went outside the city gate to the river, where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman from the city of Thyatira named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God, and the Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us into her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. And there ends the reading. Well, thank you, Vicar Jamie. Yeah, for sure. So Lydia, this dealer of purple cloth, I mean, I'm not sure how much we've heard about her before in biblical stories. We haven't heard anything about her. Yeah! Yeah, maybe we need to know a little I, bit I, more. I would love to know a little bit more. I would love to t tell oh, a little Susan, bit of a background. Please. Please yeah. So what we have even be before these verses is we have Paul and his travel companion, Timothy. And they are traveling to visit all of the churches that have been established in what is now modern-day Turkey. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I love the fact that even Timothy, we get some, uh, that his mother was a Jewish woman, she was a believer, mm -hmm. and his dad was Greek. And so we already have kind of this emerging uh, collection of people. And of course they were heading out, uh, again, sensing that the Holy Spirit was guiding them and were told that they were forbidden by the Spirit to uh, speak the word in Asia. Hmm. Imagine that, stopped in their tracks, they're ready to go, and um, the Spirit told them no. Hmm. And then that night, um, interesting to follow up with all of the, the visions in the night, well, Paul had another vision, a dream in the night, and we have that wonderful, come on over to Macedonia, uh, and help us. And so we get the opening of these verses right here. Uh, we set sail. Yeah. We set sail for Troas. And off they go. And of course they get to meet this wonderful woman named Lydia. They end up in Philippi, uh, a really major city um, in the, the a Roman colony, colony we're told. And uh, somehow uh, this, li this Lydia, who had been originally from Turkey <clears throat> and really a first century immigrant woman, dealer in purple cloth, ends up also in Philippi. Yeah. So that's a little bit of a background and I love the energy and of course in this time of listening to God we meet her also listening to Paul and Timothy. Right. So, right. Yeah. Just, it's an interesting kind of juxtaposition that you know Paul is told by the Spirit not to preach in Anatolia in in the Asian part of what is modern day Turkey, but instead to cross the Aegean over to the European part of, of Turkey in northern yep. Greece and preach there. And he encounters there a woman who is from the Asian part of Turkey and hears his message there. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. This, they, they go from like here <laughs> and they go here right. and they meet. Yeah. Yeah. It's just. What might it's... God be saying through that? Uh, right. Order. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I, th I, I think one, there's always a surprise mm -hmm. to this following of Jesus stuff. Absolutely. Uh, and we end up where we didn't think we would, but that was where we should have been anyway. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and that's what we've got in this. And, and, and also, that this, and we talked a little bit about this before we started recording, that this person of Lydia really opens up the possibility of some historical imagination, right? Because we don't have a lot of details about her. No. We don't know, like her story and her her life prior to going here and hearing from Paul right. uh, and so you've had some experience actually being where she's from <laughs> yeah. right yeah and so honestly I would love to do a little uh, slideshow oh, I <laughs> Lydia and this dealer of course I love purple maybe that's why <laughs> but it's also to imagine this woman leaving home 
and heading over to Philippi and setting up, and then of course uh, encountering Paul and Timothy. Yeah. So I actually flew to Istanbul and uh, found some people who were willing to help me do a pilgrimage of Lydia. And so I was in the rubble of Thyatira. I bought some purple tights uh, and, uh, and then actually, and I'll, if you get my daily devotions, I'll be talking a little bit about this. Sure. But re really to try to get some understanding of, of who she was, why she came to be where she was. Uh, of course, we know it's the Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. That's the that's the real you know. Right. It's always Jesus. It's always the Holy Spirit. Jesus is always the right answer. answer. There you, go. <laughs> you know, it sounds like a squirrel, but it's really Jesus. Oh, yes, yeah, exactly. but Absolutely. you know, and I I I imagine that for congregations like Calvary, yeah. you know, um, that strike striking out, heading out, and the surprises that happen. Yeah. Um, but Lydia, it was a, an amazing trip to imagine. Did she go by land? Did she go by sea, as Paul and Timothy did? Uh, and then to imagine this encounter and of course going along the Roman highways looking at the power of Rome yeah. and imagining that we actually have this particular story I mean <laughs> that we even have this Jesus story at all when you see the power of Rome right and, exactly. uh, and, and how scary it was for them to be doing what they and and of course what I love here is um, and we uh, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. Yeah, they just kind of... They had a hunch. Right. They head like, outside the city and say, oh, that looks like a good place. Maybe yeah. people come and pray there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Can you imagine trying to do that uh, in, in Bemidji, right? Like, right. where do people gather on a riverbank to pray? You know? <laughs> oh, that looks like a good spot. I'm going to just wait for people to show up and pray. And so it is. And so it is. Yeah. 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 And, 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 the, and outside the wall. Outside the wall. I, I think the there's wall. something to that. You yeah. know, that they were they were not they were not praying inside, right. but they had to go outside. Yeah. Uh, kind of the the fortress. Yes. That was Philippi. Which which is even more interesting too for this person of Lydia because it is this image of of going outside, kind of away from the established, you know rules and the established order of things right. and yet she's a pretty important person yeah. i mean you think about this idea of being a dealer in purple cloths for a little extra context purple dye was a big deal right. like this was a major market a major commodity yeah. that was rare and expensive a symbol of royalty mm -hmm. and here she is as a prominent mover and shaker in that commodity area who then goes outside the wall to pray yeah. And encounters yeah. God there. As yeah. a and woman, as an immigrant in this time, to maybe defy some of those expectations that society might have placed upon her. Yeah. And yeah, to exactly. surprise us and surprise those she encountered, perhaps. Yeah, I think that. You know, and, and I finally, after I traveled in her footsteps and on the dusty roads, I finally realized, I, I came to understand her as a really powerful individual who was also a, a really good weaver and a good businesswoman. And I really believe that Rome in establishing Philippi, she, she had come across their screen. Mm -hmm. And that they, uh, either she knew it or they knew of her and called for her. I mean, sure. that she, they she wanted really to hire her for her had a prominent, there. yeah. And of course, what color do bishops usually wear? Purple. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It goes on, right? Yeah. Sure. Or that color. Yeah. Well, and also something that stands out to me here. Uh, that isn't, it's, this is part of the historical imagination piece, right? We don't know for sure. But I know that in the book of Revelation, one of the churches that's mentioned uh, in that book is the church in Thyatira. Yes, sure. And I wonder... Yeah. Could there be a connection that maybe when Lydia heard the stories from Paul and became a Christian, her household becomes Christian, does she then go home to Thyatira and begin a church there? Maybe. Yeah, maybe that's, that's kind of that. That was my, spirit. yeah, it was, yeah. you know, in Pergamum, you know, mm -hmm. so I went to yep. all of these old cities and uh, imagined, you know, yeah. what it was like for her and these healing places and did she get tired and yeah. you know it it it's just great i mean because I mean, paul gets all the credit <laughs> right maybe there's something empowering about them meeting outside so that lydia could open her heart and return and that she using her imagination maybe the start of that church yeah. in her yeah. hometown because she was baptized she was baptized 
and her whole household, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, and then I love the fact that she pre prevailed upon them, and she said, "Come and, <laughs> Come stay, and stay at Come my and home." Stay. Yep. Yes. And, you are welcome. You know, because Paul and Timothy are really the hosts. I mean, they're the ones that she listens to. Yeah. They are the one, the evangelists, and you know, the apostles. Um, but of all things, um, at her baptism, she invites them yes. into her home. And uh, they become the strangers. And I've often thought about the power of, of that uh, changeover. Yeah. Yes. That they didn't know the habits. They didn't know uh, her language or her customs. And so she had the power now with her baptism to welcome them. And they were able to maybe receive her wisdom and yeah, listen to her. The host becomes the guest and the, the guest becomes exactly. the Exactly. And that is such an important piece. It is. Um, that we don't lose sight of that. What might they have learned from that experience? How might that have empowered them going forwards to have been surprised in that way? Mm -hmm. And the mutuality of invitation, the encounter with Paul and Timothy invited Lydia into this world and then Lydia was able to invite them in exchange and everybody gets something new. Um, yeah. And God works through that. And that's I powerful. know. Power of listening. You right. want to tie it back in. Lydia listens, is yeah. enlightened by that, and they're able to listen to her invitation. Mm -hmm. Community forms through that. Yeah. 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 And and that whole and then it says the Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly. Yeah. And and so I think on the opposite side of listening is a curiosity and an interest. And um, that's what excites me too about where we are here at Calvary and what, you know, what is exciting us and how is the Lord opening us up yeah. uh, to listen and to seek out those prayer places or those places outside our comfort zone. Yeah. And because everything's, we, we don't like to be uncomfortable, you know, and so where, where might that, where are we being invited? I think the Holy Spirit likes us to be uncomfortable. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like that. Well, and to have that eagerness. Right? Yeah. I think yeah. that may that be our prayer that we have the eagerness of yeah. Lydia to listen for the Spirit. I think that's yeah. just yeah. Deep, oh, she's absolutely. she's the best. Yeah. yeah. Well, anything else that we wanted to lift oh, up? Oh, I, I think that's I know a, you could go I for think, all. I, 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 I think it's a good teaser. It I is. think it, it is. is. Um, I'm glad we get to. I'm glad we get to meet her. Yeah. I yeah. really am. Me too. And, yeah, this uh, is gonna be a great opportunity. And, um, yeah. And I get to, I, I'm glad we get to stay in our home for a little while Amen. next week. Amen. Amen. Yeah. We'll look forward to that. Absolutely. We absolutely will. And we look forward to hearing from you as well, that we be a part of this listening together as we gather yeah. in these texts. Uh, being a part of the podcast, as always, you can uh, get in touch with us, podcast at calvarybemidji.org. Be in conversation with us around the yeah. office here. Come and hear Vicar Jamie as he preaches on this text on Wednesday. Yeah. All these very many ways that we can be a part of this journey together, listening to God, listening to one another. Yeah. So, until next time, thanks for listening, yeah. and we love you very much. Yeah. Peace, everyone. Yeah.